Hey guys, it's Emily, and I thought I would make a how to trace video because I do a lot of speed traces, but I never really show exactly what I do to get the traces done, you know? So it's actually a lot of things, and I've been practicing this actually for a really long time. So I just chose a rec room picture that I haven't traced yet, which is me, Pigstein Delco. And now, the most important thing, I think, is how you start. So, usually I keep all of my tools on the other monitor, but you can't see that, so I'll bring that over here. Here's the toolbar. Here is the layers. I think you can open this, so you, like, if I close it by accident, you go to, like, Windows, um, Dockable Dialogs, Layers, and that's what you want, and you want the Layers thing. And the tool options. That is also important. So I always start off by going to the circle tool and bringing it down to two. That's the size that I use. So when you zoom in on it, it looks like that. That's like the brush size I use. <laughs> so what I like to do is out make sure when I outline it, when I'm testing the outline, now it's a little bit too small. So what I would do is scale the image down like that. Test it again. Hmm in a whole bunch of different places, maybe just a little bit more. This until you think, it's kind of hard to explain how exactly how I like it, but I like it so it's like half of the line is going on both sides. But when you're doing things like glasses, maybe just a little smaller. Actually, wait, I have people in the background, friends in the background, and I don't want to go too small, so actually I think this is good. And once you find a size that you like, right click on the empty spot, do new layer, hit OK. And it should look like that. And now you can like turn off and on these layer buttons. I'll move it when I show you. So usually um, if there's outlines in a picture saying you're doing cartoon and it's like everything's outlined in black, say like this, uh, um, you can't really see that when you're drawing. So what I like to do is change it to a brighter color so you can still trace it. So and when you're done, this is just a test with the outline, I just take the fill tool and fill it in. And then when you're done with that color, you would change it to black. See? Of course I don't like that, so I'm not going to use it. But in this case, it's just rec room, so I'm just going to use this. Okay, so usually when I am tracing, I'm using a mouse, so don't worry, you don't need like a art pad thingy or anything. With GIMP, I will show you the tricks that I use. So to make a straight line, you click to set a point, hold shift, left shift, and that'll make a line. And then just keep on clicking, holding, shift, and then clicking, shift, click, shift, click. Okay, and you want to make sure that the lines run smoothly to the end. Now my rule, this is just a personal rule, is that if it's like a separate entity to whatever you're tracing, it needs an outline. But things like, if like this, I don't outline here or here, but I would outline here because it's separate from the head. But because the hair is the same thing, I don't outline like the same thing, like if it's on the same thing, but I'll, I'll trace it like this and that, but I won't trace it here or here. But that's just mine, that's just how I do it, and I'll show you why in a bit. But if you want to trace every single line, go for it, I'm not stopping you. That's just my preference. So, let's finish tracing the hair. Oh, did I forget to mention that if you hold control and scroll, it is zooming. Very, very useful, so you don't have to, like, use the magnifying stupid tool. Just hold control, zoom, and the scroll. Zoom in and out, zoom in and out, out. It's so easy. And... Just get what you're trying to get here. Alright. So look, if I go over to the layers button and press that, you can see what I've got so far. You want to make sure that this is on, you're drawing on the new layer. If you're drawing on this one, undo it, go back to here. Alright, so I think I do the glasses next. Now I wouldn't trace here because it's a little bit too thin, so what I do is maybe like the outsides of the glasses, just so I can get the full thing. The outside, see look, I'll do this again. And now I do the inside, outside of the glasses, the inside, outside. Emily, look at how precise and thorough you're being. 
The general rule for me is that I like to go right to left and up to down when I trace. Alright, so we got the glasses outlined. Easy stuff. And now I'm just gonna finish tracing the entire head now that you have the basics. Alright, so the head's trace except for the facial features, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and go back to that color, and usually I know I got the right size, when I can change the brush size to 6, and it fits. Oh, well, maybe I could go even higher. 7. You can either do it this way, or the other way I like to do it, which is like... <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> this. It's like, I feel like it's more precise if you do it this way. So the eyes do the same thing. You want to make sure that you're stopping, that the pixels stop at the right places or it won't fill correctly. Oh, and did I mention that Control Z is undo? Like, oh no, wrong line. Control Z. Now that I got those how I want, I can... Oh, here's another useful tip. If you hold down control while you have the mouse button, you can get the color picker. See, look, I got black, I got pink. But it's only on the layer that you're choosing. So, like, I can't choose this layer. I can only choose, like, the skin color from this layer. I can only choose from there. So there, I have my black color back. Bam. 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 There. And that's me. <laughs> now, for coloring... This is where you need to use the layers thing. It's so like I just said, you need if you want to choose this skin color right here, make sure you have the pen tool selected, the pencil. If you make sure you have the second layer selected, you can now choose the color, see how it changed to this, then go back to here, and then fill it in, like that. You know what, I missed a spot. <laughs> I forgot to trace this for the outline. Okay, now, just keep doing that for the rest of the face. Alright, the hair is where things get a little tricky, and don't worry, it's not as hard as you think. So, make sure you've got the top layer selected. You see how there's two different colors here? I don't think that warrants an outline, so what I do is, I, again, I take a separate color, and then trace down the middle of the line, like so, and then take this color and then usually the color that's smaller like the smaller space see how there's more on this side than there is on this side that's what I used to change that line to see and it looks kind of 3d now because I did that and let's do it up here too starting like this take that and this and then back to here. Take that color. I am. Nope. Wrong layer. See? Gotta be careful with your layers. Actually, I want it to match. So, let us go back to here. Use your best judgment on where lines stop and start. Again with this part. I want to make sure there's no trapped pixels. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So, all right, let's say I'm tracing something like this and something like that happens. When you are coloring, usually what I like to do is just because when you color things, that will like stay like this. So, what you want to, I usually just like cover it up like that. So, be careful when you got trapped pixels, especially when you're like going to different lines. Like, let's say I did that. You want to be careful of these. Make sure you start and stop on lines that don't trap pixels. Like that. See? That would be bad. So, move it over a little bit. Now, at this point, I usually like to take the hair color. Now. And... That's too dark. <laughs> so, you just gotta mess around with the colors that are here. 
until you get something you like. That's too bright. Because <laughs> it's got to match the rest, you know? There, that's good. Alright. Same deal here with the coloring. I'll finish with my body here. Some things are really hard to do with like textures, so I just ignore them. Like scarves and pattern shirts and stuff like that. I have this predicament here of you can't really tell that this is raised up because the colors are pretty similar, so what I'm gonna do is outline it breaking one of my usual rules, but if it enhances the image, then I will do it anyway. Alright, coloring. Let's do this again. I always take my secondary color like this, do a line. Yep, this is me doing it fast, so this is the speed that I usually do it in. There, even though the difference is subtle, it still is nice. Same here. So there's like three different colors, you see? Uh, probably start with this, like that. So then take that color for both. So just do them one at a time. Now for these dots, I will probably try and find the right size here. Just keep going up until you think you get it. Yep. Make sure I got that color. There we go. That's me. Oh wait, I forgot one thing, the last thing, how I do backgrounds. Okay, so, it's all on this layer, but what I do is use this tool, which is called, here, let me just have the backgrounds like this so you can see, it's called the color, select by color tool. So, it selects the entire background. And then, let's say I want a pink background. I go, uh, take that color, and then I take the this color, and make it slightly darker. This is just my preference, and then I go to the gradient tool. Make sure it's linear, but it can be anything. And then, boop. There you go. Pink me. <laughs> and then probably, if it was just me that I wanted to do, I would scale it. Just crop it a little bit. And get the select tool, do this, image, crop selection. There you go. A nice trace of me. <laughs> so... If you want to do some traces, uh, show me. I want to see what you guys come up with. But this is my tips and tricks and techniques. But if you find out something... Oh, I missed a spot. <laughs> you always got to be careful about that. And see, look, trap pixels. So if you want to go through and like put all them trap pixels away. But yeah, if you trace anything, I would like to see it too. So do send it to me. So yeah. I just wanted to say one thing that's really important. If you trace someone else's work, please do not post it anywhere without their permission. Make sure you ask them first. Like, sure, I trace other people's stuff all the time, but I don't post it anywhere. I maybe send them to my friends, but I keep them for myself mostly. Yeah, they make good, like, backgrounds or just gives me something to do. Like, for example, I trace a lot of Zarla stuff. Now I got her permission to use these in a video. So, um, here are some of my favorite traces. Maybe the ones that took me the longest or the ones that I thought were coolest but once you get like really good at tracing you can do like things will take you hours I think one took me like three hours one of these and it's just so much fun to do so just practice at it don't post them without permission unless it's like rec room because it's like fan art <laughs> um, 
But yeah, really, please don't, because that's awful. <laughs> I have a ton of art saved that I'm never going to post without permission. So always get permission, unless it's rec room, then you're fine. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. So enjoy, have fun tracing, I'll see you later.